The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. LSMFT. 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 Remember, year in, year out, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Season after season, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. At 50, American. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you back 15 minutes. Jack Benny is in his dressing room where Rochester is trimming his hair. Just a little more off the side, Rochester. Yes, sir. You know, Rochester, it may sound funny, but when I was a kid, I had the most beautiful head of thick golden curls. You did? Yeah. In fact, my mother was so proud of them, she gave a curl to every one of our relatives. Well, you better write to them, boss. It's time to get them back. <laughs> Yeah. Hold it, Rochester. How much have you trimmed off the sides? Almost a handful. Good. Now sprinkle it around on top. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what are you laughing at? This ain't no haircut. It's a landscaping job. That was a little trick I learned in agricultural school. Good old Bandini Tech. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> shaving you now. Roger, I thought you said you forgot my shaving cream. I did, but this stuff will work fine. Well, I don't know. Are you sure it's good for shaving? Yeah, it says so on the box. Does, does everything. <laughs> I guess so. But I wish my face could have that oxidal sparkle, you know? Now, hold still, boss, while I lather you up. Maybe you better open your shirt first. Okay. There you are. Say, boss, why do you wear that penny around your neck on a string? It's for uh, sentimental reasons, Rochester. This is the first penny I ever owned. You know that dollar I have framed up in my bedroom? Uh-huh. That's the first dollar I ever owned. You know that picture of my Maxwell that hangs in the den? Uh-huh. That's the first car I ever owned. That's the first car anybody ever owned. <laughs> what? That car scared more horses than the meat shortage. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Now, hurry up and shave me, Rochester. Okay. Hold still while I lather you up. Rochester, you have to use that much. Hold still, boss. There, that ought to be enough lather. Now, where's the... Come in. Hiya, Rochester. I was just passing by and I... Hey, that looks wonderful. Phil, stop trying to blow the foam off. It's me. <laughs> Get your foot off my knee. It's not a brass rail. <laughs> what a guy. Okay, I'm sorry, Jackson. What do you want, Phil? Well, I'd like to ask you what number I should play on the program today. I've been rehearsing two of them all week. What are they? Well, one of them, Stardust. What's the other one? That's what I like about the sound. <laughs> you better play the first one, Phil. I don't think the public is ready for the second one. <laughs> Go ahead, Rochester. Start shaving me. Yes, sir. Oh, say, Jackson, I want you and the rest of the gang to come over to the house tonight. I'm giving a little, uh, surprise party for Alice. Surprise party? What's it for? Well, I think it's her birthday. Think? Yeah, it's either today, March 12th, or June 29th. <laughs> Phil, for heaven's sake, you mean to tell me you don't know when Alice was born? Look, Jackson, I'm her husband, not her mother. 
Yeah. All right, Phil, I'll be glad to come. Shall I have dinner first? Well, of course not. I got everything all set. I prepared it myself. Now, what are you having? Well, there'll be martinis, Manhattans, old fashions, bourbon highballs, scotch and soda. Bell, bell. I mean, what kind of food are you serving? What? Food, food. Well, how do you like that? I knew I forgot something. <laughs> well, how in the world? Ouch! Rochester, you cut me. It's about time you felt it. I did it a minute ago. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me? I thought you were dead. <laughs> Don't be funny. Did you cut me bad? It's nothing, boss. I just snipped the stem off your Adam's apple. Clumsy thing. Now I have to buy a collar button. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Bill, about the party, I'll be at your house at 8 o'clock. That'll give me enough time to buy a gift for Alice. I think I'll get her some candy. Well, you gave her candy last year, and she never got to eat any of it. She didn't? No, nah, she was carrying it upstairs, and the bag broke. <laughs> Gee, that's a shame. And those jawbreakers roll so. <laughs> I'll have them put in a double bag this time. Uh oh. What's the matter, Rochester? Did I cut you again? Can't you tell? Well, it would help if you'd bleed a little. <laughs> well, I'm not going to force myself just for you. <laughs> Say, Phil. Uh, what are you giving Alice for her birthday? Hey, Jackson, I got it right here in this little box. Let me show it to you. There. Ain't that a pretty? Oh, Phil. What a beautiful gold locket. She'll love that. Well, open it up, Jackson. There's a picture inside. No, I'd rather not, Phil. Alice should be the first one to see it. Well, we don't mind, Jackson. You're like one of the family. Go ahead. Open up the locket. Well, all right. Oh, now, isn't that sweet? <laughs> A picture of Patrillo. <laughs> How thoughtful. Yeah. That's very nice. Phil, you can raise your head. I closed the locket. <laughs> Here. Look, Jackson, I better get out on the stage and get my musicians ready for the broadcast. I'll be seeing you, huh? Yeah. So well, I guess I better get in the studio, too. Rochester, wait for me here in the dressing room. Yes, sir. And you can tune in the radio and listen to my program if you wish. If I wish? Yes. Once I didn't listen to it and you put me in solitary confinement. <laughs> now, Rochester, you know I didn't compel you to stay in that room. No, but you took away all my clothes, told me I was free as a bird, and pointed to Capistrano. <laughs> what? I was shot down over Bismo Beach. <laughs> Stop being silly. I'll see you after the broadcast. Okay. Gee, that Rochester makes up the wildest things. But they're kind of funny. I wonder if he'd be good on the radio. Nah, he'd always be late for rehearsals. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Gee, I, I hope we have a good show today. Oh, Mr. Benny, excuse me. Well, well, hello, Mr. Kitzel. Hey, pardon the intrusion, but last week you promised me a ticket for your broadcast. Oh, yes, yes, I have one right here in my pocket. Here you are. Thank you. You, uh... <laughs> you, must, uh, you must like my program, eh, Mr. Kitzel? Oh, it's one of my favorites. I like your program, Fibber Magoo and McGee. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Huh? A date with Julia. Julia? <laughs> and on Friday night, I'm listening to People Are Schnooks. <laughs> no. no, no, no. You mean people are funny. Hmm, with this ticket, I'll soon find out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you better hurry in. I'll save you a seat in the first row. Laugh as hard as you can, will you? Hmm, my heart is broken, and it tells me I should laugh. Your heart is broken? Why? Because yesterday, my alma mater didn't win the football game. <laughs> Your alma mater? Notre Dame. <laughs> oh, did you go to Notre Dame? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the four horsemen? Yes. I was the stable boy. <laughs> Well, you better hurry, Mr. Kitzel. It's time for the show. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Hey, Jackson, we're all set. Okay, Phil, let's go. America Take It Away, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And that strange click clack in the back was his boy shooting dice. <laughs> and now, ladies... <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I thought that was pretty clever myself. <laughs> that strange click clack in the back. Was I it? wasn't laughing at that. What? I was reading a letter from Mama. Oh, oh, a letter from your mother, eh? Well, what does the Hildegard of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> I know, I know. After her last letter, she had to join the Radio Writers Guild. <laughs> Go ahead, let's hear it, Mary. Okay. <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, I received your last note and was very glad to hear from you. As you know, last Tuesday was election day, so your father got up early, went to the polls, and voted for Hoover. <laughs> what? He feels he owes it to him because since 1928, Hoover has been the top button on his underwear. <laughs> That's what I like about your father. He's so loyal. Go on, Mary. Your sister, Babe, has become a career woman and now has a very novel job. She's a lifeguard at one of those new fountain pen companies. A lifeguard at a pen company? If anyone writes help underwater, she dives in and saves the pen. What a girl. Babe also received a lot of money from a picture studio in Hollywood. Gee. She sent a photograph of herself in her bathing suit, and they sent her a check for $5,000. Your sister, babe? They said her legs gave them the idea for the spiral staircase. <laughs> I knew she could do it. Uh, Say, Mary, Mary, does babe, does babe still go with that slap-happy prize fighter? No, she couldn't stand it any longer. Why, what happened? Well, they'd be sitting in the living room, and every time the phone rang, he'd jump up, shake hands, and give her a right hook to the jaw. <laughs> oh, well, then I don't blame her. Well, Babe didn't mind getting hit, but she had to keep him training all the time. <laughs> well, go on with the letter, Mary. Okay. Last Saturday night, Pop and I went to a big formal affair. Aunt Edie's silver wedding. Gee, has your Aunt Edie been married 25 years? No, 25 times. Oh. <laughs> now, don't interrupt anymore, Jack. Okay, okay. <laughs> and Mary, hmm? speaking of Aunt Edie, do you remember little Harold, who was the ring bearer at Aunt Edie's first wedding? Well, that's the one she's married to now. <laughs> well, what do you know? Outside of that, Pop and I haven't done much. Although, last week, we went to the movies and saw Merle Oberon in a wonderful picture. Gosh, she's beautiful. Her, your father took one look at her, then looked at me, and when we got home, I realized what Babe went through with that prize fight. <laughs> Gee. Fortunately, my girdle broke and I wedged him into a neutral corner. <laughs> hmm. yeah. Some that... more, is there? Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Gee, your mother is a riot. Go ahead. By the way, Mary, I certainly envy you being out there in California. It was so cold here yesterday that Papa's teeth chattered all night. They made so much noise, he took them out of the glass and put them back in his mouth. <laughs> Mother's a car. What a family. That's all for now. 
I will write again next week. Your loving mother, Amber Livingston. Hey, that's, that's a nice letter, Mary. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a P.S. I suppose Jack will start writing to us again now that airmail is down to five cents. <laughs> What does she mean, five cents? I can get Rochester to fly it there for nothing. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't see anything funny about that. Neither do I, Jackson. You don't? No. Hmm. Rochester and his crazy jokes. <laughs> now, kids. Come in. Hello, everybody. What's cooking? Oh, hello, Dennis. Dennis, you're a little bit late. Where were you? Well, I'd have been here earlier, Jackson, but I stopped across the bar in a bar. You gotta live, bub. You gotta live. <laughs> Stopped across a bar in a bar? That sounds like Chiss Sweet Sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> oh, boy, am I dizzy. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, you mean to say they served you a drink? No, they said I was too young, so they just spun me around on the stool. <laughs> oh. Hey, Livy, how about you and me painting the town? Dennis. What's eating you, bub? You want to fight? <laughs> A fight? Hey, Phil, how about an alka -Seltzer? You don't need one! <laughs> Dennis, what's the matter with you? All they did was spin you around on a stool. Yeah, but they held my head in one place. <laughs> you... you mean they... I don't know whether I'm coming or Dennis. <laughs> Believe me, you're Dennis and cut out all this nonsense. Okay. He hates me because I'm head loose and fancy free. Dennis, nobody hates you. Now, come on, let's have your song. Okay. That kid can find more. Phil, where are you going? I'll be back in a minute, Jackson. Hey, Dennis, what stool were you on? Phil, come back here! Dennis is going to sing. Now, go ahead, Phil. Somewhere in the Night, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, you sang that beautifully. I wouldn't know. I'm loaded. <laughs> You're not loaded. And I don't want to hear any more talk like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. 
Now, sit down. Yes, sir. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do a sketch entitled The Strange Loves of Martha Benny. Whisper his age. Mary. <laughs> now, in this play... Wait a minute, Jackson. Last week, you announced that we were going to do The Killers. Well, we were, but I'm going to postpone it until two weeks from tonight. Why'd you do that, Jack? Because Mark Hellinger, the producer of the picture, asked us to wait two weeks before we louse it up. <laughs> and by that time, the picture will have played in more cities. Well, what's the thing you're going to do tonight? Well, actually, Mary, it's going to be a story based on my career as an entertainer. It opens with the actual incident of my first appearance on the stage in Washington, D.C. I'll never forget that night. See, my performance was so great that right in the middle of my act, one of my fans got so excited, he jumped right on the stage. That was John Wilkes Booth. He was making his getaway. <laughs> Chiss sweets. Chiss sweets. Oh. <laughs> now, in this play, oh, ladies and Jack. gentlemen... What? Jack, what? before we do the sketch, uh, what about the commercial? The commercial? Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Ready, fellas? <laughs> Not with them, Don. The quartet is out. But, Jack, you've got them signed for three more weeks. I don't care if they're signed for three years. And another thing, they've got an option coming up, and I'm dropping it. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Well, you fellas can take that offer you got from the Hollywood Bowl. It's all right with me, just so they... Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> they had an offer from the Bowl? Yes, I hate to bring this up, Jack, but they were offered so much money that they... Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I've got them under contract. <laughs> they can't break it, I know, because I've already tried. Well, all right, then. Will you listen to the commercial we've prepared? Well, all right. What's it going to be? Our musical background will be till the end of time. Oh, oh, well, that might be good. Yeah, go ahead. Ready, boys. L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. L.S., M.F.T. L-S-M-F-M-F-T Don, Don L-S-M-F-T Ty Don Don, that isn't it That isn't what I want Wait a minute, fellas Wait a minute, fellas Don, just a minute, fellas Wait Don Don. Don, look at me. Don, Donzy boy. Look at me. Don. No, look, Don. Uh, Don, I'm being nice. Look. Look, Don, I'm smiling. Don. Don, can't you see that that isn't in keeping with the rest of the program? It's too slow, Donzy Poo. I mean, that... <laughs> It has no pep. Well, Jack, if you want something lively, just listen to this. What? The William Tell Overture. Hit it, boys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, fellas. All right, fellas, get out. Get out. Out, out. You guys are driving me crazy. I'm going mad. Oh, Jack, Jack, stop pulling your hair. I'm only taking the ones that were sprinkled out. <laughs> now, come on, fellas. Get out. Get out. And as for you, Don Wilson, you got me into this, and you better get me out. Jack, don't get so excited. Well, I am excited. I'm so mad I'm not even going to do the sketch tonight. But, Jackson, you got to finish the show. Let Don finish it. He's so smart. He knows everything. I'm getting out of here. Hello, Mr. Benny. May I have your autograph? Oh, shut up! <laughs> What 
What'll you have, mister? How much is a scotch and soda? <laughs> 75 cents. Hmm. How much is a bourbon and Coke? 60 cents. Well... Come on, buddy, come on, what'll you have? Just spin me around a couple of times. <laughs> okay, buddy, here you go. Bartender, one more spin and I'll go home. Okay. Whee! Once more. Excuse me a minute. Now, will you gentlemen have the same as usual? Mm. Well, look who's here, my old buddies, my pals. You know what, fellas? I've been mean to you. Mm. Yes, I have. <laughs> You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it up to you. I'm gonna pick up your option and give you more money. Hey, bartender. What? Give these fellas a spin on me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, saving bonds are vitally important in the nation's battle against price inflation and for the future and welfare of us all. It is important that we, who have developed habits of thrift during the war, continue to build financial security for ourselves and our children. Protect your future by extra bonds now. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs. Make no mistake, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. James Maynard Talley, independent tobacco warehouseman of Durham, North Carolina, has been in the tobacco business all his life. He said, season after season, I've seen good tobacco bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. Yes, good tobacco, full of flavor, ripe and mild. I've smoked Luckies for 18 years. Yes, year after year, independent tobacco experts, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, men like Mr. Talley, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> L-S-M-F-T... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with you next Sunday at this time when our guests will be Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman and Leo DeRocha. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.